Just ahead on American Black Journal, we're talking about the city of Detroit, its future, the residents, and the neighborhoods. We're going to look at designing a Detroit that's inclusive of all residents. Plus, Arise Detroit Neighborhoods Day is bringing together thousands of volunteers across the city. Stay right there. American Black Journal starts now. Masco Corporation is proud to manufacture innovative and environmentally friendly products for the home. Delta faucets, craft made in Marillat cabinets, and Bear Brand paints have all been designed with you in mind. Masco and its family of companies, serving Michigan communities since 1929. Support also provided by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, a partner with communities where children come first. The Cynthia and Etzel Ford Fund for Journalism at Detroit Public TV. The DTE Foundation proudly supports 50 years of American Black Journal in covering African American history, culture, and politics. The DTE Foundation and American Black Journal partners in presenting African American perspectives about our communities and in our world. Also brought to you by Ally and viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. A lot of the conversation about Detroit's future focuses on creating a more inclusive city for all residents. Detroit Design 139 is made up of design experts who are advocating for future investment, development, and design projects that benefit all residents, old and new. I'm joined now by two members of the initiative's advisory committee. Melissa Dittmer is chief design officer for Bedrock, and Olga Stella is executive director of Design Core Detroit. Welcome both of you to American Black Journal. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Yeah. So let's start with what Detroit Design 139 is. Well, it's an initiative actually that uh, Melissa helped uh, form several years ago, two years ago. This is the second uh, edition. Uh, that's a, an av advocacy um, effort to really help uh, lift up the role of design in the city's revitalization. Yeah. Right. And it is a collaborative advocacy initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no one person or organization that can uh, pull together design strategies for the city. Uh, Detroit is a diverse community, diverse communities across its 139 square miles, and we want to make sure that we have a diversity of voices um, included in the conversations about what makes good design within Detroit's 139 square miles, and then how those designs get interpreted um, throughout each of our communities in the city. Yeah. Uh, talk about some of the stakeholders who you've brought together uh, in the first year and now in the second year. For right. This. So. Um, we did the first one two years ago in 2017 now um, and at that point we had uh, a variety of universities uh, philanthropic organizations mm -hmm. design core was heavily involved um, city of detroit and um, other sort of architecture advocacy groups like aia detroit um, and then we learned a lot from that first session um, we basically were testing a case to see if this exhibition would be successful and what type of conversations we would have um, when we pulled all of these architecture, landscape, architecture, and master plan projects together. We learned that we needed to uh, broaden the conversation in the next exhibition, so focused um, on uh, a more inclusive conversation for 2019. That means that we've broadened out um, the amount of people that we have uh, included in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So we have all those stakeholders that we just talked about, plus uh, community organizations, um, business leaders, and um, we've been making sure to have uh, multiple conversations to continually test what we're doing and f get feedback in order to improve as we go forward. Yeah. Uh, at Design Core, you've been working for a while on I think uh, it's maybe best described as getting us to, to kind of understand how right. design 
influences the way we live in the city. That's right. That's right. And we've been, um, you know, we, in September we put on a whole month of design to help um, the community really experience that, whether they're coming to a workshop or a lecture or a community experience like Light Up Livernois or Easter Market After Dark. And then ex exhibitions like Detroit Design 139 are a really important part of that because, you know, everybody experiences it and um, learns about it in their own way, whether mm -hmm. it's listening to someone speak or actually doing something with their hands. And I think that the part of what we're really excited about for this September um, and this exhibition is that it's not, we're trying to get past it's just a building or it's just a park. It's really about the process. It's about the systems in our city and how people engage. And, um, and the conversation in Detroit is about how does everybody participate? How does everybody get to be part of the city's revitalization? Well, the systems, the places, um, the jobs that are available, all of that you know, feeds into this. Mm -hmm. And I think through the exhibition and through the other things that, um, that we're putting on through Month of Design, we're hoping that it just starts to you know, continue to build that awareness and that people can connect it to something in their own lives. Yeah. Uh, you do hear a lot of people um, complain about uh, the way that the city is changing, uh, both in terms of the way it looks and the way it feels to, to live here, uh, because they feel left out. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel left out of, of the decisions. Uh, talk about how uh, th this program is designed to, to, to make more people feel included. Right. Well, um, in addition in addition to having more people and organizations part of the organization and curation of the exhibition, we've also uh, increased the amount of locations where we are having exhibitions. Mm -hmm. So two years ago, we just had um, an exhibition downtown Detroit in our 1001 Woodward space. We're gonna do that again this year, but we're also going to have three satellite locations out in the neighborhoods, uh, one on East Warren, uh, one at uh, Old Redford and one at the Liv6 uh, DCDC mm -hmm. home base um, that just opened recently on Livernoy. And so, like Olga was saying, um, it's about understanding not just the final product of the built environment, but making sure that we have an inclusive process that includes those communities in those conversations. And what's gonna be interesting with these four different locations is understanding are the processes to get to an inclusive design product different in each of these communities mm -hmm. or are they the same and do they result in different projects that may be more specific or special to one neighborhood um, and right for one neighborhood and how would that be different if you placed that same conversation that got to a different design product or architecture or landscape in a different neighborhood. Yeah. And I think this year too, we asked for narratives and video. It's not just two dimensional mm -hmm. pictures mm -hmm. and, you know, but it's a lot more interactive and there's more, I think, that we're hoping, and you know, once a jury selects the um, submissions that will finally be, be installed, um, it's a lot more, more of a story mm -hmm. for people to engage with. Um, and a variety, I mean, there's 140 submissions this year yep. from Detroit and other UNESCO cities of design, which, I mean, is, is, is amazing, right? right. So there's, mm -hmm. there's plenty of work happening from grassroots organizations to big downtown development groups. And I think what's gonna be really wonderful about the exhibition is how we show the connections between those stories mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the different locations. The connection and the balance. Uh, you, you just mentioned the International City of mm -hmm. Design designation that we enjoyed. Ta talk about what that means. Yeah, so Detroit is the only United States uh, city to be uh, designated a UNESCO City of Design, which is part of a network of cities of design um, that are recognized for their legacy of assets, but really about the power that design has in creating a sustainable and equitable city. So mm. we're talking about it from the perspective of what are the projects and the people in Detroit who are really using design to create better quality of life for all of our residents. And in Detroit, um, what we're trying to do is make really have Detroit become internationally known as a place for inclusive design. So this exhibition, some other things, we have 50 partners working on over 60 projects across the city. Last year, these projects touched 70,000 people. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of momentum here, but design is one of those things that 
if you, you know, you feel like if you haven't gone to a fancy art and design school, <laughs> if you, you know, maybe it's not for me. I don't know if I know what it yeah. is. It doesn't always feel that accessible. And part of what we're trying to do through all the activities we do all year, partnerships with Detroit Design 139 and others, is just help more people really see how it is really part of your everyday life. Yeah. And there are lots of people in your, in, in your lives who are maybe designers and you didn't realize that's what they did. And the ways that it can just help make a city that works better for you. Yeah, right? I mean, I, I kind of like to think of design as uh, if people are not comfortable with that word, uh, talking about intentionality, yeah. right. right? The idea yeah. of intentionality of design, but also of process, mm -hmm. as, you're, yeah. as you're saying, that yep. uh, really talking about the way things should be from the perspective of the people who are affected That's by exactly it. Right. Right. That's exactly right. And then having a conversation about it as well. So yeah. we can have both a, a design outcome or an intentionality of a design outcome and a process by which we're all talking about what design means to every individual um, and what their outcomes are. And so that's the second part of having this exhibition that um, in all these four locations they, that will run for the entire month of September. We're making sure uh, this year that we activate each of these spaces with quality programs and events mm -hmm. that can bring different um, interested parties or community members or uh, uh, age demographics, uh, into the space mm -hmm. to look at the work and then talk about uh, what design means to them and how it can improve their community. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's been great. I mean, this is why having this advisory board is so important because community development advocates of Detroit yep. is involved, Detroit Future City is involved, all the universities, there's just a lot of participation. A lot of different entry points for yeah. Detroiters. Right. And right. so then and so then the programming is really, it's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not like stuffy, you know, <laughs> um, like architecture speak, but really about I think that discourse is what is so important because just because something looks beautiful doesn't mean it works for everyone. Mm -hmm. And getting or past everywhere. that, right. or yeah. everywhere. Right. And so getting past that, the idea of, oh, it has to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. It's not about the materials. It's not about how it looks. It's really about how it works yeah. and what that means in different neighborhoods and different places. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, I, yeah, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we could go on for days, right, yes, we but totally uh, we're out of time. So congratulations <laughs> on the work, and thanks for being here. Thank you Thank very you. much. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Just ahead, Detroit's great neighborhood tradition. But first, here's a 2001 American Black Journal interview with then-mayoral candidate Nicholas Hood III about his plans to revitalize Detroit neighborhoods. <laughs> There are those who say that uh, Nicholas III uh, has a shot at being mayor, but that you don't come across as the strong political leader that Detroit needs at this critical hour in its existence. Your platform, I guess, may address some of those concerns. You are for moving away from all of the heavy concentration on downtown Detroit and redeveloping the neighborhoods, true or false? I'm for developing the neighborhoods as well as downtown. And my voting record has substantiated that. How would you strengthen and improve neighborhoods while maintaining a focus on downtown Detroit? I'd like to do it uh, by using what I call five cornerstones. The first cornerstone is an aggressive land reuse strategy, which would basically have something akin to an Urban Homestead Act mm -hmm. to give the land away for free to nonprofit developers and to uh, subsidize for-profit development in the city by allowing a tax credit uh, for every dollar of investment either for new construction or renovated housing and uh, retail and, and restaurants in the city. Mm -hmm. Two, I'd like to couple that with a radical redeployment of the police department uh, to police back in a model that we had uh, earlier in Detroit, more by precinct, less by dispatching from downtown. Mm -hmm. I want every citizen in Detroit to feel like they have a personal relationship with their police department. Number three, I would redevelop the neighborhoods by combining those first two planks with effective code enforcement. It's time for the 13th annual Arise Detroit Neighborhoods Day. Thousands of volunteers are going to take part in community projects and special events throughout the city on the first Saturday in August. It's a day for residents to show their pride in their neighborhoods. 
I feel like Neighborhood Today is going to be a day to bring it all together. You know, to bring really and truly, that's how I'm doing it. We're the Sussex Block Club between Finkel and Puritan. That's our official name. I'm going to try to get my neighbors to come out and work together and talk to each other because we have diversity on our block. We've got volunteers from the Masons, we've got volunteers from Arise, and we've got the block. It's going to be exciting and it doesn't matter who we get. Uh, I was born in Detroit. I saw it, uh, I guess, in the 60s and it's kind of heyday. Uh, and then the 70s, 80s, I saw it come down a bit. You want to start on a certain house? Um, yeah, I want y'all to start on a certain house. So, and you're going to need a box, a broom, a rake, that kind of equipment. Okay. Okay? We need to really all come together and kind of work in a direction. And our basic direction is to keep our neighborhood up to a certain standard. And joining me now is the man behind Arise Detroit, Luther Keith, along with two community partners, Pastor Barry Randolph of Church of the Messiah and Ryan Myers Johnson, founder of the Detroit Sidewalk Festival. Thanks for being here. So uh, this is one of my favorite shows of the year. Every year we, yeah, you come yeah, back and we yeah. talk about this big day yeah, in August yeah, yeah. when you bring thousands of people, literally yeah, thousands of people yeah, out yeah. into the well, streets. First of all, thank you for again having us. And uh, yeah, we think it's something really special. Our 13th annual Arise yeah. Street Neighborhoods Day. No city in America does this on this scale where we're going to have uh, 200 or more registered community events, uh, projects of all kinds, health fairs, cleanups, concerts, festivals, parades. <laughs> and it's really a way to take another look, a different look at the people in the neighborhoods of Detroit and how much they show their pride, but they're also working. So it's a great, great day for the city, and we like to call it Detroit's great neighborhood tradition. And the people of Detroit in the neighborhoods have made this. Uh, it hasn't been elected officials. It's been people in the neighborhoods themselves. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it feels like everybody seems to participate in this in some way or another. Tell us what uh, what might be new this year uh, for Arise Well, Detroit. you're going to hear from Pastor Barry Randolph, the Island View Rising, which, uh -huh. is, a big e which, is, which is a big event. Uh, we've got a prior partnership with the uh, Metropolitan Council of Churches, believe it or not, who are doing something called uh, Prayers Around Detroit on 40 uh, intersections in Detroit, but they're going to bolster that by doing community service uh, after Prayers Around Detroit. Um, we got a partnership with the Motown Museum celebrating their 60th year. And of course, we have our staple of incredible events like the Sidewalk Detroit Festival that Ryan Myers Johnson will discuss here. Uh, jazz on the ad, despite the construction of Livroy, is going to continue. <laughs> it's going to go, it's on. Going to go <laughs> on. We have the Bill Our, Bill Our Art Fair, uh, Brain and Change Festival, uh, Shirley Birch's group up there, Eight Mile, and the Quinder. Uh, all manners of parades, uh, uh, Curry St. Mary's Community Council, Olivia Shakur, we're doing her annual parade, and just an amazing array of events. I mean, if you go to our website, arisetroit.org, and click the event list, it'll blow your mind. Yeah. And it's just it's an amazing thing that, to be part of and to see everyone so excited about it. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Barry, uh, you are located in an area of the city that I feel like is changing really fast. Uh, yes. The work that your church uh, does is being, I think, uh, uh, affected, of course, by that, that change. But talk about how that fits into the idea of, of Neighborhoods Day. Well, we've been doing Neighborhoods Day for about eight years. Mm -hmm. Even before I knew Luther, we were participating in <laughs> Arise Detroit. Um, but this year, we're doing what's known as Island View Rising. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the rise of the neighborhood by mm -hmm. the people in the community, the redevelopment, housing, um, internet, the block clubs, bringing everybody together to showcase what's happening in this vibrant, vital community in Detroit. Yeah. Um, when you, um, the, the work that you're doing with, especially with youth uh, in the neighborhood, I, I feel like would dovetail really nicely with Neighborhoods Day. Absolutely. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is uh, we are a mixed race congregation, mm -hmm. but 60 percent of our congregation is African American male under the age under of 30. 90. Uh, un oh, under the age of, <laughs> under all the age under of 30, the age right? Of under, all under the age <laughs> of, the age of, of 30, 90, right. but under the age of 30. And now uh, they're going to play a vital role. We're going to have our marching band out, which is about 84 members, and it's predominantly young black males in the city. But we're going to showcase all of the um, entrepreneurship that's taking place place and we're going to show them to Detroit. These are um, our young people. They're not only our future, they're our present and they're yeah. doing great things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, talk about side, the Sidewalk Festival. 
So Sidewalk mm -hmm. Festival is about celebrating Detroit landscape and culture mm -hmm. through arts. So we bring dance, music, theater, installation art, architectural interventions to the streets of Old Redford. We don't use any traditional stages. We're all about celebrating the place as it is. So artists are invited to create original works for alleyways, community gardens, storefronts, and the street itself. We've been participating in Neighborhoods Day since we began seven yeah. years ago. Wow. And annually, we bring in a, a, over 5,000 people wow. to the festival. So we're really excited to just create beautiful memories for the community through immersive artistic experiences. Yeah. Uh, talk about Old Redford and, and what kind of change is happening in that part of the city. Old Redford is an amazing neighborhood in Detroit and I'm so excited to partner with the Artist Village as well as Sweet Potato Sensations, Motor City Java House and the Old Redford Theater. Um, the people in that community have literally been holding it down for so many years and it's a true arts and culture hub as well as culinary hub with sweet potato sensations and as development happens community members are really working together um, to ensure that um, residents voices are heard there's the old Redford business association and a newly formed community development corporation for old Redford that's really um, bringing community members together so that um, detroiters voices can be heard and so that um, the arts and culture spirit of the neighborhood can uh, really lead the charge in the new development in the area yeah. Yeah, I wonder how much uh, the, the, the kind of changing narrative uh, of neighborhoods in the city uh, affects the way that you think of or put together neighborhoods today. Now, this is a different city than it was five or six years it ago. Is, it is, and the, the buzzword is gentrification, as yeah. you know. Yeah. And um, I think we're sensitive to that. One of the things we try to do with the Rise Detroit, not just neighborhoods, they to understand that everybody has a stake in this and everybody's voice that should be heard, as, as Ryan said. And I think. What Neighborhoods Day allows people to do is everybody to make a statement no matter where they are, no matter what their station in life. And quite frankly, I think some of the more controversial aspects of discussing gentrification has played a role in making people understand the importance of inclus of inclusion. And uh, I was saying this word I've used before that we've coined at a rise Detroit for our neighborhood summit, uh, we've coined the word as the opposite of gentrification is a riseification. And a riseification means that everybody's voice is heard, nobody's pushed out, everybody's included, and everybody is respected. Mm -hmm. And on Neighborhoods Day, you see that on display. And uh, I don't think most people are opposed to new people coming in or new development, but come in the right day, come up with respect, listen to us. And most, all of us want the same thing. We want successful Detroit, vibrant neighborhoods where people get along. And uh, that shouldn't be that hard to do. And so what we're trying to do is play a small role. And what is so amazing, Steve, is people like Pastor Barry and Ryan and hundreds of other people across this city have, are making statements on neighborhoods today that we care about our community. We are here. We are not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just an inspiring thing to see happening all across the city. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Barry, I want you to talk a little about um, the role that the church has played in you know, balancing these interests between the people who've been in that uh, neighborhood in Island View for a really long time and people who want to come now and, and help redevelop it. Yeah, so for a long time, Church of the Messiah has been doing um, empowerment services and building and creating a neighborhood. A lot of times people, they always stop and think about developers coming in, but the church itself is a developer. And we have over 213 units of housing that we've built. Uh, we have our own employment office. Uh, we're the internet provider to the community and neighborhood. We have workforce development. Um, we have an 84 member marching band. Uh, we have a, a doctor's office. We have a bike shop. We have a tea beverage company, a clothing <laughs> line, video production, candle company, all created created by the people in the community in the and neighborhood. neighborhood. Yeah. And what we're telling people is uh, we're not opposed to new people coming in, but you're coming into a vibrant community to where you really do have to ask permission to be able to come into this community that you want to be a part of. Um, it's nothing to be discovered. It's already a vibrant already neighborhood. It, it's yeah. already there. So, yeah, and we created our own community benefits agreement. So you got to make an agreement when yeah. you come into the I mean, community. it's really remarkable if you go to, to your church or to, to Island View to see that interaction between new and old and how it's not full of tension or it's not. Uh, anger. It, it actually works. Yes, I mean, it does. One of the things I think Pastor picked up on, see, neighborhoods, they, we're so hung up on big things, a huge building or five 100,000 people doing something. 
And we kind of dismiss the fact that in the neighborhoods, these small pockets of people in these neighborhoods, we're having probably close to 100 various cleanup and beautification projects. Most of them are small neighborhood groups, who people who are taking care of their neighborhood. Uh, we have a big project where Blue Cross Blue Shield is going to adopt 16 schools, but most of these projects are small projects, 20, 30, 40 people coming together around a common cause to create a better community. And we have to get people to understand and respect these small pockets of people that care. It's not just big, uh, bombastic projects that drives the city, but unfortunately the media, which I was formerly mm. part of, <laughs> And don't, don't hold that against me. But, <laughs> of course but, not. <laughs> but there's this, there's this focus on big, splashy yeah. things and overlooking things like the little coffee shops and the little neighborhood right. festivals yes. and small store churches. The little things that people yes. who live here yes. can and do for themselves. Yes, and they all have value. And yeah. that's what this day allows us to do, to take yeah. a look at them, take a look at, at, at these type yeah. of efforts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we look forward to uh, Neighborhood Day. AriseDetroit.org for Arise more Detroit. information. You can still well, come on and volunteer. Click our event list, uh, all the organizations in real time, see what they're doing, contact that person, call them and say, we want to come out and volunteer on Neighborhoods Day, and it's just that easy. All right. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you again, you. Steve. Thank that you. is our program for today. You can go to AmericanBlackJournal.org for more information on our guests and to check out past episodes. And you can always connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time. Masco Corporation is proud to manufacture innovative and environmentally friendly products for the home. Delta faucets, craft made in Marillat cabinets, and Bear Brand paints have all been designed with you in mind. Masco and its family of companies, serving Michigan communities since 1929. Support also provided by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, a partner with communities where children come first. The Cynthia and Etzel Ford Fund for Journalism at Detroit Public TV. The DTE Foundation proudly supports 50 years of American Black Journal in covering African American history, culture, and politics. The DTE Foundation and American Black Journal partners in presenting African American perspectives about our communities and in our world. Also brought to you by Ally and viewers like you. Thank you.